Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, Isis, Imitation of Life. The Goddess Next Door helps a young black girl overcome racism during the era of Jim Crow in this Golden Age Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Imitation of Life in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. When it comes down to this Harriet movie, I don't know who to be more disappointed with. The black people who made this production, like your Cassie Lemons, and the black screenwriter who wrote this historically inaccurate film, or the large masses of black people who made this film a success for these Hollywood movie studios. In between the two of them, they have literally made a great victory for white supremacy by promoting and supporting a film that maligns the image and reputation of one of our greatest historical icons. And when I take a critical examination of this Harriet movie, it literally is something that comes straight from the devil. Because the only way I can look at this film is to see it as something satanic, because only the father of lies would find this to be a quality film because the father of lies loves telling lies and this film is chock full of lies. Now as a screenwriter myself and someone who has studied adaptation in books like Sid Field's screenplay and Robert McKee's story, I can tell you that what you saw in that Harriet film was not an adaptation. Because in adaptation, you want to make a biopic that stays true to the facts of a person's history while telling a compelling story. So the facts of that person's life are made a priority, and staying accurate to the facts of the story are made a priority when you are writing a biopic screenplay and making sure that those events are depicted as accurately as possible. That is what adaptation is all about for biopics. However, the screenwriters of this film decided that they weren't going to stay true to Harriet Tubman's story, stay true to Harriet Tubman's mission, or stay true to Harriet Tubman's message. No, these screenwriters and your director, Cassie Lemons, decided that they were going to change Harriet Tubman's story, and they were going to change Harriet Tubman's story so that they could entertain a large group of black women who believe in the concept of swirling. Because to place this whole narrative in Harriet Tubman's story, talking about how her brutal and cruel slave master had to kill a black man who was a bounty hunter. This is a complete lie when you take a look at the historical context and the time period that Harriet Tubman came in. Because to say that this brutal, so-called brutal slave master who Harriet Tubman ran away from was to be so-called in love with Harriet Tubman, that is one of the most dysfunctional ideas to put in a movie about one of America's greatest freedom fighters and the founder of the Underground Railroad. It is literally like digging up Harriet Tubman's corpse and slapping her in the face and telling her that by telling her story and projecting this whole swirling narrative on it, and that's a complete insult to Harriet Tubman and Harriet Tubman's legacy when you look at it. Because to take one of our American historical icons and then say, oh, the slave master was so brutal, and that, but he was also in love with her, that is a complete insult to, to, the, to Harriet Tubman and to Harriet Tubman's legacy. And it's a complete insult to black people to project this whole concept of self-hatred onto the woman who led the Underground Railroad and fought for the freedom of black people. Because if this slave master was so 
brutal. This is, she was running away from him for a reason. And I am deeply, deeply disgusted by the whole idea of what they did with this film, trying to romanticize American chattel slavery. Because to romanticize American chattel slavery like this just shows how disconnected your either your Cassie Lemons and the screenwriters of this film are, or how they have completely sold out. And I believe that they have completely sold out the same way your Halle Berry sold out back in 2001 when she did Monsters Ball, knowing willfully that this film would degrade the image of black females and usher in the entire decade of ratchetness that we are still continuing to deal with because once Halle Berry participated in Monsters Ball with Billy Bob Thornton, it changed the culture and it changed the narrative from black women loving black men to black women becoming this ratchet black woman and then going out here and looking to pursue relationships with these white men. And what I feel that is going to be more disturbing with the success of this film is that we're going to go from the era of black female ratchetness to the era of black female super dysfunction because when you have a film that promotes the image of black females going out here and romanticizing the concept of slavery and the dehumanization that went on in slavery, it shows a people who are deeply lost because only a person who is deeply lost is going to go out here and make a film where we romanticize the concept of American chattel slavery, something that was extremely brutal, extremely violent, and extremely abusive towards black people, something that dehumanized black people. We have someone sitting here romanticizing this idea, talking about, oh, the slave master was so brutal to Harriet Tubman, but he also loved her. This is a very, very, this is, this is mental illness right here, and th this is putting mental illness on screen for the entire world to see. Now, the other part of this Harriet movie that I found to be quite troubling, and that was also factually inaccurate, was the depiction of this black male bounty hunter. Now, this black male bounty hunter is another historically inaccurate concept because white supremacists in slave states would never give a black man that kind of power. I remember a movie I watched back on UPN called Gang of Roses, which also went out of its way to be historically inaccurate in depicting black cowboys in the West. And this one featured a feminist narrative, and they showed a black man putting a gun in the face of a white man. And I knew from numerous historical documents there were things in that film that were just horribly historically inaccurate, like women wearing these tight leather pants and it was, it was a ridiculously bad movie. And I looked at this film and I saw the exact same historical inaccuracy that was in that Gang of Roses movie, which featured, I believe, Lisa Ray and Bobby Brown. But I saw the same historical inaccuracy in this film. And when I look at this film, it's telling me that a black man would be a bounty hunter and a slave catcher, that's a historically inaccurate picture because... Black men in many of the slave states were not allowed to carry guns, and black men in many of the slave states, they were not allowed to go out here and participate in these kind of businesses because white people did not want to see a black man having that kind of power. But your white supremacists, they want to promote this propaganda because they want to demonize the image of the black man, and your Cassie Lemons also wants to demonize the image of the black man and make him the black brute and the black boogeyman, and what they want to do as they make the black man the black brute and the boogeyman is then 
make the white slave master the savior in their romanticized idea of slavery and make it where the white man is going to be the black woman's savior. Now, this is where your adaptation goes from a, an adaptation into propaganda, and that's what this Harriet movie is. It is nothing more than white supremacist propaganda made by black people to promote the idea that one of our icons in black history needed a so-called white savior, and this is nothing more than a lie being produced by these white supremacists so they can minimize the impact of slavery and continue to promote the socially engineered message to masses of black women that your white man is a savior, your white man is better than your black man, and you, in order to get protection and safety in Western society, you need the protection and support of a white man. And this is one of the most disgusting things about this film, made by a filmmaker who I once had some respect for back in the day, the same way I had respect for Ava DuVernay many years ago when she was doing films like I Will Follow. But when I look at Cassie Lemons these days after hearing about this Harriet film, I put her in the same category of sellout that I place your Halle Berry in and your Ava DuVernay in and your Alice Walker in. All three of these black women have betrayed the black community and they have betrayed it in the worst way because the, all of these women willfully and intentionally betrayed the black community all so that they could get this white validation and white approval and so they could get continue to get crumbs from the white slave master's table. And that's what your Cassie Lemons was out to get with this Harriet movie. This movie was a message she was sending to all of the white people in Hollywood who control the money and the media that she would be a dutiful house slave in continuing to promote the propaganda that would make white supremacists comfortable about the black image. So what she wanted to do is make with this film send a message to white supremacy that she would be a dutiful slave in promoting the narratives that white supremacy wants to be pushed about the black image and pushing the narratives that make white people feel comfortable about black people because that's what this whole Harriet movie was all about. It was not about making a historically accurate biopic. It was all about making a slave movie that would show how much of a slave she would be for white supremacy and someone who would do the dirty work for white supremacy. And what's deeply sad is that we had so many black masses buy into this propaganda, not understanding what this film was all about. Because those of us who do understand what this film is all about and understand media, we understood that this film was nothing was not an adaptation of Harriet Tubman's life. This film was nothing more than propaganda designed to revise history, distort facts, and distort the story of Harriet Tubman so that they could romanticize the idea of slavery in black women's minds and make them believe that slavery wasn't as bad as it was written in historical documents and make them believe that your white man is some sort of savior and that he was doing something good for the black woman by keeping her in slavery. All of these concepts are paternalistic and extremely insulting, and sadly, many black people can't see how insulting these concepts are in this film. A lot of them always thought of, we're supporting a black person, 
but that's just not enough, as I see it, as a publisher of positive black fiction and someone who wants to keep a positive image of black people out there, I'm starting to understand we have to be more selective about who we choose to support because the people we support and the narratives they produce, these are some things that we need to take a look at, especially with this whole Harriet movie. This, to see this movie get $12 million at the box office shows us how bad things are in the black community because I remember with again with the Angel Heart movie there was when Lisa Bonet was being used to degrade the black female image black women went out of their way to shut that film down and put and cut it out of business but these days we have black women buying into many of the same concepts that that propaganda piece back in 87 are now being pushed in 2019 and sadly in 31 years things have gotten worse as related to black people and Harriet shows us how instead of us fighting to liberate ourselves and empower ourselves through our own media and our own image we are being led back to the plantation by a group of house Negroes like those Cassie Lemons and Ava DuVernay's and people like your Alice Walkers and your Halle Berry's who all want to promote the image of black women walking to, back to the plantation to be the mammies under the slave masters of white supremacy. And that's really troubling because your black woman is supposed to be the first teacher of culture and the culture that we are getting from these black women in Hollywood is not a culture of black empowerment. It is a culture of white supremacy. And this is a media that I find to be quite troubling and disturbing because it shows that even with freedom, some people would rather be slaves. If you want to pick up some powerful and positive images of black women and read a story about a about a, a black girl being empowered, you can pick up my book, Isis Imitation of Life, on Amazon.com. In that story, I took the time to do the research on the era of Jim Crow and talk about the positive things that went on during the era of Jim Crow, like the black-owned businesses and black towns. And in this story where the goddess next door helps a young black girl who just graduated college overcome racism and Jim Crow, you're going to read a positive story about what black people did during those dark times and how they started walking towards the light that led to their own empowerment. So there are great stories out there by writers like myself and we and I want to sh share those stories with you and I urge you to pick up a copy of Isis Imitation of Life so you can get a story that features a positive picture of black history and a story that shows you what we did that was successful to us and that's all I have to say for this video if you want to see me make more videos like this you can donate to my patreon my paypal or my cash app by clicking the links in the description box now available on paperback and e-readers, Isis, Bride of Dragon, God is Next Door, and John Haynes team up to take on the Dark Vampire in this action-packed Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Bride of Dragon, paperback and e-reader at online booksellers today. <laughs>